Hello everyone, my name is Mr. Mojo, and I'm the Eve Staker intern this year. It's my goal to not only learn the ropes of this industry, but to be able to participate and contribute the projects. Now, I don't have any experience. I mean, they literally are doing this experiment where they just pull somebody off the street and say, here you go, learn how to do it. I'm very thankful for that. But, trust me, I really don't know what I'm doing. And I want this video to be reassurance to you that even if you're extremely inexperienced, you can still put together a NUC, get Linux on there, and learn how to do something like run the kiln testnet. Something that you can do right now to really help test the merge. But without further ado, I want to talk about this NUC that I bought and show you how I put it together. So let's begin with the hardware that I got. Eatstaker gave me a grant for $1,000 to be able to get any hardware that I wanted to make this possible. So of course I spent $1,200. Anyway, the model that you're seeing here is on the screen because honestly, I really don't want to pronounce that. But inside of here is an Intel Core i7, and it also can do things like hold to DDR4 RAM and stuff like that. If you really want to see everything about it, I'm just going to go ahead and put the link in the description so you can take a look at it. Next on the list of items I want to show you is the Samsung 970 EVO Plus 2TB NVMe SSD. So not only is the name of this thing a mouthful, but it's actually very important the reason why I chose this. One, you do not want to pick a spinning disk hard drive because they're just too slow. You really need that solid state drive. A lot of guides say that you should get one terabyte, but I decided to take two because honestly, I'm lazy and I really don't want to have to maintain this thing a lot. So two terabytes it was. The last thing that I want to show you is actually another Samsung product, and it's just some basic 32GB DDR4 RAM. The reason why I went with 32GB is because I noticed, looking at the resource usage on these execution clients and these consensus layer clients, you know, I was just like, it gets really close to 16 gigs, and I don't want to worry about that. Might as well just get a big 32GB stick, throw it in there, not have to worry about it. So that's what I did. Something that I want to mention too is the fact that I did use the word basic in there. And by basic, I actually mean no RGBs, dull and boring. Trust me, you don't need any of that stuff. Like, you really want something that you can just set up, put on a shelf, and forget about it. That's definitely my goal. If you want the RGBs and everything, I guess, but I mean, why bother? Seriously, don't do it. Now that I have told you a little bit about the hardware that I chose and why, I want to show you me putting it together. A process that I haven't done in like 15 years or so. Enjoy! What the fuck is English on this thing? Here we go. <laughs> Alright. I'm going to put this thing together. Oh man. Need some safety and caution information here. Oh man, it, this thing can burn me alive, apparently, if I fuck it up. Alright, here are my instructions on what to do. Huh. It says, do not use a power screwdriver to open. Wrap. So I have all my stuff laid out here. I'm going to put this thing together. Never done this before. I have the instructions right here. Let's go. <laughs> All right, so looks like I open it up from the bottom. It says I shouldn't use this power screwdriver, but uh, I'll just uh, just use it to barely open it. Then I'll unscrew the rest, I guess. I think this looks possible. Yeah, okay. Uh, yep. <laughs> I don't know how to take this.
Does this fit? So one of the main issues that I had during this part of building this thing is this really tiny screw that keeps the SSD in place. And I only had a power screwdriver. And honestly, it was very difficult to get that out of there. So enjoy watching me struggle with that. I'm having to unscrew this like the tiniest thing. I don't have an actual screwdriver in the house. <laughs> Um, yeah, it is what it is, I guess. Oh, goodness. Oh, no, I just dropped this little thing in here. Oh, I see it. I don't know how I can get this out. Honestly, I'm just going to do this. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> All right, now i got to get this thing in here. <laughs> oh, it just popped right on out. Okay. So according to this, I have to... Set it in, put it down, screw her in. Okay, let's do that. <laughs> oh, Lord. I've never done this before, by the way. <laughs> so putting in the SSD really wasn't that bad. Honestly, the hardest part was getting that screw out of the way and screwing it back in. But basically, it was you slide it in, push it down, put in the screw, and you're good to go. And... Go. Straighten it out. All right. It was so tiny. Lord. Awesome. All right, oh. SSD is in. Let's go. There we are. So of course the final part that I'm gonna put in here is the RAM. There's two slots in this NUC. And I'm so newbie that I really didn't know which one to put it in. And now I know it really doesn't matter. But at the time, I was so confused because it wouldn't go in there. I just wasn't pushing down hard enough so it would lock in. But you live and learn. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know which one this goes in. <laughs> I'm assuming it says it goes in the... I guess it didn't go in either one. So I'm going to slot it in the top one, I guess. No. Kind of scary. I honestly really don't know. <laughs> I mean, I don't think I'm gonna break it or anything, but you know, there we are. Hey, that's pretty easy. That really wasn't that bad. <laughs> Uh, and then I guess I just put this thing back on. Two parts. Awesome. But I'm going to just do this. <laughs> Honestly. One nice and screwed in. And give it a small. All right. Reassurance. There we go. Hey, it's all together. <laughs> awesome. Awesome indeed, Pass Mojo. Good job not breaking that thing while putting it together. Now that I've talked a little bit about the hardware, though, I want to talk about the operating system in there. So, we're segueing into this thing right here. Yep, this has Linux desktop 20.04.4 on there. And honestly, I'm surprised that I was able to remember that off the top of my head. Crazy how much I'm learning so far. Anyway, you want to use Linux and not Windows. I'm not gonna get into the technical reasons why, because honestly, I can't tell them to you. But everybody that's smart has told me, put Linux on there, so I am. Plus, I've seen a lot of these setup guides, like the one I'm watching now, and really, I don't think Windows would like that too much, so Linux it is. Now this was the first time I had ever done anything like this. I've literally always just bought a computer pre-built, and it had Windows on it. I've never had to take something and make a bootable version of an operating system that can then install. I guess except for some virtual machine stuff, but honestly, it's a bit different. But anyway, there wasn't a lot of trials and tribulations with this because I looked up a very handy guide that helped out, but I have a few problems. Let me show you them. I can't get signal for some reason. Why? Why? 
So here was the culprit right here. I didn't have this checked. Boot USB devices first. Man, that really, really screwed me up. Like, I thought I had it, but I uh, guess not. And that was pretty much it for installing Linux. Just a few little issues there. That being, oops, I didn't actually properly boot from the USB drive to start. But other than that, it was pretty easy. Just make sure you have an Ethernet cable, HDMI cable, and a keyboard and mouse so that you can actually do stuff on there. But other than that, it was fairly easy. Anyway, everybody, I really appreciate you watching the video. I hope you really enjoyed my first soiree into this kind of stuff. And if you want more from me, well, I think I know what I'm going to be doing next. See you then.